Hey everyone, Shag here with my Super Mario World ROM hack, also known as Super Shagario World, which is silly, but it's true. I'm going to be providing commentary on some new levels that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. This commentary is mostly for explanation purposes and not for comedy, like my Let's Plays. So, uh, we'll see how this goes, I guess. Here we have the mostly unchanged opening screen, just the title, and I added letters spelling out the, uh, I guess you could call it a company name, though it's not really a company, it's more just like a group. Coat Pockets, yeah, that appears several times, and there's not really much to say about that. So, uh, then there's that. That's not really important right now, but eventually the level will incorporate that. The one that looks like the intro level in the special zone. But, uh, right. Next we have the intro, which is just there to make fun of Kaizo Mario World and to possibly frighten some random players. But, um... Since we don't really need to play through all the old levels again, I'll just show the new ones by skipping to this file. First, um, this ghost house leads to two dead ends, which function as top secret areas. The uh, first one is basically just the top secret area, but underground and it has a moon in it. Stock up on some power-ups here to make it easier to show off some of the levels. Um, capes were randomly changed into lamps. After I asked one of the members of Code Pockets, Hey, what should I change the cape and the uh, feather into? And I guess we decided on lamps. I don't know why. We'll get to the ghost house in a minute, but first... The first underwater level, I think it's replacing Donut Secret 1. Urchin's Stockpile. The theme of this level is, well, you'll see in a minute, a lot of these blocks. Yeah. Also a lot of enemies to throw them at. We have a secret little, not really secret, but a little, slightly hidden stockpile there. Lots of urchins. You really don't have to kill them all, but, well, I don't know. They're just sort of there. Sort of blocking your path, sort of. So it's kind of nice to kill them. We have a porky puffer guy who is good to kill. A fish that is meant to supposed to look like it's operating those cannons there. We'll get to that in a minute. There's a secret little bonus area. It's not really a, that interesting one. Just sort of explosives and a bunch of dragon coins. That's on purpose. And this leads us to up here where the, you see the key. The secret exit is not really difficult to find, but the key might be slightly difficult to find. Not really, but. Here we see that we didn't really miss much going through there. Let's see if I can let's see if I can get through that. Hmm. Well, I suppose that's what these are for. Well, anyways, we didn't much miss much of the level doing that, so I'll just leave it for now. Here we have another little bit of items guarded by urchins, which might be a little bit frustrating to get to. Or that could happen. But, um, continuing on, we have lots of cannons and torpedo teds which are trying to kill us and have succeeded. Um, wow. Didn't expect to die so much on my own levels. But I guess that's just a consequence of 
whatever. Drop the key there for a minute. The object here is to, well, obviously get the star. Might as well pick up a few other things on the way. This is the part with lots of waves of fish. Well, there would be if it weren't for sprite limitations. And there is the secret exit. That leads us to... The House of Elements, replacing the Donut Secret House. But first... Might as well do the, show the normal exit as well. Though it is not terribly far from the secret one. See, there are more fish now that the bullets are gone. Don't need the key. Past here, you will not see very much opposition. In fact, that is the only enemy. Then you run into a whole bunch of cannons that I don't even... This is another little scare the player trick. Being that. A bunch of cannons that fire over your head. And ones that... Places that look like they could shoot you, but they don't. So, um, after this, I guess this level's pretty short, maybe I can fit it into this video. The Dead End Ghost House. Being that it looks like it's a dead end, unless you remember Super Mario World. This says, this notes that you must use the secrets, which is a hint that you're going to have to fly up there, just like in the level that was here in the original. But first we have to show what's over here. So getting a little bit of lag, I'm not sure why. But that's not really a, much of a problem. A few minor obstacles. You get a couple of cape power-ups over here in case you don't have any when you're entering this level. Hang on a second. Uh, where is these... Nah, nah never mind. I was going to try to stop the lag, but, uh... Whatever, it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so it does matter. This is ridiculous. Wah! Right, sorry for that, whatever. Um... So you have to fly up here, obviously. Or not so obviously. And there's a few more minor obstacles. I'm not trying to make the hack hard or anything, in case you haven't noticed. It's just trying to be interesting. It's probably the hardest obstacle, I don't know. But, uh... This part right here is actually a secret exit. But this is actually the normal so-called exit for the level. It's a little bit mean there. But this leads to... The that leads to here, Dead End 2. We've already shown Dead End 1. But all of this, all this is, is a yellow Yoshi. Because there aren't really any Yoshis in this hack. So this might be helpful, I'm not sure. But in any case, we have to show the rest of this level in its normal state. Not a whole lot to say about that part. And that's just the end, I guess. I thought I'd added a little something extra there. But, um... Yeah. Next up, I guess there's only one more level to show off. But we're gonna have to make a new video for that, so hang tight.